the decomposition of mercury oxide using a retort and a Nobel Prize winning retort stand. I'm happy. So here I am in the lab. Hi, this is Jake Wizard 4 here at Faraday Studios. And you'll notice there are no wits around today or no audience. Just me, moi, the wizard alone. We are digging around in the uh, storage, cleaning things up, and I found this bottle. And my friend Cortland read it and he goes, what in the world is this stuff? Oh my gosh, danger. Fatal if swallowed. Fatal in contact with skin. Fatal if inhaled. Sounds like my wife's cooking already. And it says right here, mercuric oxide red. What in the world is mercuric oxide? I wonder what it is composed. What's it made of? So I looked it up, of course, and it's HGO. Mercury is HG and oxygen. And I know oxygen and I know mercury. Mercury is that silvery metal that melts at room temperature, right? So I'm going to open this up to see this deadly fatal poison here. Ooh, makes me nervous. That's kind of disappointing. I'm not supposed to breathe this. So we've got the, I don't know if you can hear it or not, I've got the fume hood up here and it's, it's sucking the air up out there. So I'm gonna take some of this and pour it in this little dish so you can see it all. See what mercury oxide looks like. That's a pretty color. This is composed of mercury and oxygen. And you know the word composed. I wonder if I could decompose, pull it apart. So I want you to think for a second, how in the world could I pull mercury and oxygen apart? Right now they're together, they're sharing electrons. You hear the electrons, you listen carefully. How in the world could I get those to pull apart? We're gonna heat it up and we're gonna get them vibrating so much that they'll come apart. And this is where mercury, now I've got a bottle of mercury here, liquid mercury. Well, there it is. And that's the mercury you know, that silvery metal. Right floating on the top of it is some uh, contamination. Where in the world did that stuff come from, that orange? cheese floating on there. So we got some mercury oxide in there. Man, we went to a lot of trouble to uh, purify the mercury we stored and we forgot about oxygen sneaking in there. In order to decompose some of this, I've got to get it up above about 350 degrees. And if it decomposes, I should get some mercury that I'll recognize, that silvery stuff, and some oxygen. Uh, I'm going to put the uh, mercury oxide in this retort. Man, this is, oh, this is some old school chemistry. Chemists used to use these all the time, and you'll see them in the movies, you know, in the Mad Scientist Laboratory. We're going to put the mercury oxide in here. Hopefully, the mercury portion will stay in here. Or if there are mercury vapors that come up when they hit this cool glass over here, they'll condense back into liquid mercury, and we'll see it. And the oxygen will come out here. How are we going to catch the oxygen? Hmm, I got an idea. I'm going to fill this bowl with water and we'll put the nozzle down here. We're going to put this on a stand and heat it up to about 350 degrees. And as that decomposes, hopefully the oxygen will come over here and it will bubble up through the water we have in the bowl and we'll catch it in some jars. We'll catch jars of oxygen. And hopefully as the hot mercury vapors come up when they decompose, they'll start to cool down and maybe we'll see some mercury collecting in there. And we might even see some mercury droplets forming in here. We might see some down here in the water. I don't know. And I thought, just to celebrate that this is a classic demonstration, I'd get out one of the rare items in our collection. This is called a, you ready for this? This is a retort. This is called a retort stand. Ooh, go figure. And this is an official one. It's got a little plaque here on the bottom of it. It's made out of wood. These are so neat. This is handmade. Oh, this is so cool. It's got uh, bolts that will tighten down and hold something in place. And it can clamp something right there. Retort stand circa 1850, used by Sir Robert Robinson, OMFRS, Fellow of the Royal Society. My gosh. Nobel Prize winner, chemistry, 1947. Wow, isn't that sweet? Nobel Prize winner. And on the bottom, Professor Robinson wrote, property of Sir Robert Robinson, Nobel Prize winner. 1850 retort stand. It's got a lead ring. They cut a groove and filled with lead and they give it a little heft so it doesn't tip over. That is so cool. In order to heat it up, I've got a little stand that will hold this burner filled with butane. Turn on the gas and spark it. We'll get a nice hot flame. We'll stick it under here. That's really going to be hot. In order to uh, keep from shattering the glass, because, you know, this is a nice piece of glass where chemists have to be careful that we don't go from uh, room temperature to 300 degrees. Suddenly it might shatter the glass. What I do is I'm going to wrap the retort with some wire gauze. This is old school chemistry and that will spread the heat out so there won't be a hot spot. So I'm going to assemble this and then fire it up and see if we can get that to decompose. Here we go. 
So there it is, and I've got mercury oxide down inside the bulb of the retort. I'm gonna use this stand to hold the retort. I'm gonna set the retort up here on the burner platform, get it clamped in place, and I'm gonna get this in down below water level, right there. I'm gonna get that in down below water level. So it'll take me a few minutes to get that all set up. That's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so now it's all set up. Here's my 1947 Nobel Prize winning stand retort clamp holding onto the retort and it's filled with a little bit of mercury oxide and I've got the wire screen wrapped around my retort bulb to spread the heat out and you'll notice the mouth of the retort is underwater and the little penny stopper is in there. Here is the symbolic representation of the mercury oxide and when I apply the heat hopefully it'll start to vibrate from the heat and bring apart. The oxygen will go up out down to the bottom of the tube and we're going to collect it later in some jars and mercury should be left behind somewhere. I hope we can see some mercury and if we do, even the slightest little bit, we'll have success. So I'm going to fire up my torch. There it is. I'm just not going to stick the torch under there. I'm going to slowly warm things up a little bit because I don't want there to be a big thermal shock. Preheat the oven, so to speak. Oh, you see a bubbling going on down there? That is just the air inside the retort expanding and I'm going to keep moving the burner around a little bit. Well, we're sure getting some bubbling. Obviously, some gas is being generated. I don't know if you can see it or not, but I'm seeing a coating starting to form on the inside of the glass. Hundreds, if not thousands, of little shiny metallic BBs on the inside of the glass. That's amazing. I'm seeing mercury build up right on the neck of this. You'll see some shiny globules. And if you look on the top side where it's probably cooler, you're seeing some yellowy orangey stuff form again. So it's, we're making mercury right there. The dog on if it isn't recombining with some of the oxygen. You sneaky weasel. Look right down there at the very neck of neck, you'll see a little silver ring on the inside. The bubbles are popping out. That's oxygen. That's condensation and that's that's the mercury. Man, look at that mercury down there. I bet we worked all morning to get 10 cents worth of mercury made. But there we go. We have oxygen and we have little bitty spots of mercury. Now I'm going to set this thing all back up again and I'm going to fill some jars with oxygen, if it is oxygen, and then we'll test that later. I have to go down and take a nap now. I got all excited. Okay, I'm going to get this back under here. Warm it up a little bit. Here comes the jar. So what I'm doing normally, if I was going to collect the gas, I'd fill the jar with water and then let the bubbles go all the way up to the top of the jar. But since these bubbles are so hot, I'm just going to let that hot oxygen come out and fill the bottle this way. Well, this is what I do all day. I sit here holding a peanut butter jar over some expelled oxygen. Of course, this is probably not pure oxygen. I'm sure there's some mercury vapor in there. I think I've got that, that filled with enough oxygen to prove the point. I'm going to fill up several jars. Well, it appears that we were successful in decomposing HGO, mercury oxide, into mercury. And we collected what we assumed was oxygen. So we're just going to do a test to make sure it was oxygen. I'm going to light a candle here. There we go. I'm sure it's not pure oxygen, by the way. We were pretty sloppy with our technique. And as long as there's some oxygen, you know, more than would normally be in an empty jar. So I'm going to open the lid here. I'm going to take a wood splint and light it. And then I'm going to stick it in this jar after I blow it out, see what will happen in a purer oxygen environment. Here we go. See what happens if I stick it in there now. Oh, did you see that? Blow it out. Just kind of glowing a little bit, a glowing splint. Yeah, we have oxygen in that there. That's pretty cool. We did get oxygen. We got oxygen. You saw it. Let's do another one. I'll, I'll try something else. I do not encourage people to smoke at all. I think cigarettes are a bad thing. But I have seen, saw working in a hospital when I was in school, there were signs, no smoking oxygen in use. What would happen? I don't know. I've never done this. Since I don't use these things, I really don't know how to properly light them. But Woohoo, that's cool. I guess that would be kind of a if you're using one of these in the hospital where grandpa was hooked up to the auction, you might cause some troubles. What else do I have? I'm gonna take some steel wool. I'm gonna get it glowing. Stick it in the, yeah, stick it down and see what happens. Woo, look at it go. Wow. Why am I doing this? I don't know, it's having a good time. There we go. It's burning a good way. Sit there. Go down the oxygen. Whoa, okay. I just cracked the jar. I'm in trouble. That's one of my wife's good canning jars. You didn't see it. I didn't. Oh, it cracked some more. Well, scratch one jar. 
Should have put some water in the bottom of the jar. Remember that next time. We'll put a little water in the jar to save the jar. I ruined that jar. Oh, well. See ya. Bye.